everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and it's time for your weekly wrap-up. I'm shooting this a day early because I'm going to see Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, give a presentation in Hartford, Connecticut on Monday night, so I am doing this on Sunday, but I do want to begin by thanking our newest Patreon subscribers, Craig Grella and Patrick Brown, and if you gave to the Patreon on Sunday, I will get you next week when I shoot the wrap-up back on my usual Monday night schedule, but I do want to thank uh, both Craig and Patrick for their contributions and for everyone who's been contributing on a regular basis and everyone who's been watching on a regular basis too. I really appreciate it. I wanted to also show you what we did this week. So we reviewed the uh, HP 14AN013NR. This is a 14-inch, $199 computer with an IPS 1080p display. Probably the best value Windows notebook at the moment. You can see that review linked down below in the video description along with every other video I mentioned in this one. So definitely check it out if you're looking for a good deal. We also looked at the Verney Apollo Lite. This is a uh, $200 or thereabouts smartphone that uh, GearBest had provided to the channel. And I do want to give you some important errata on that. I'm going to be putting this uh, very prominently on that review because Chris R. wrote in and said that the phone doesn't work with LTE networks in the United States, only on 2G networks. And it turns out uh, that is definitely the case. It looks like it supports one LTE band on T-Mobile. I'm about to get a uh, prepaid subscription from a company that does run their traffic over T-Mobile, so we'll be able to look at this more closely in the future, but definitely be aware of this if you are looking at buying the smartphone. You might have some 4G compatibility issues here in the U.S., and I wanted to make sure you all saw that. And we also got to look at Channels 2.0 for the Apple TV. This is an app that allows you to watch live television through the use of an HD home run digital tuner on your Apple TV, the fourth generation version with all the app capabilities on it. Really works quite well. This is an upgrade from a prior version that they had come up with. Uh, this one adds some really cool new features like time shifting and a full channel guide too. So definitely check it out if you are an Apple TV user. Now it's time for some Q&A and I got my first question in here from Sprite Mite who noticed that my channel name has changed and I have done that. I changed my name of my channel from my name uh, to Lon.TV primarily because Lon.TV is showing up everywhere and I got a good deal on the domain a couple of years ago and I'm finally just transitioning everything over because uh, what I did is I moved the channel off my personal Google account and created a Google brand page for it and that's going to allow me when I bring on some part-time staff and some other stuff uh, to allow folks to log in and help manage my channel. And I've got somebody right now kind of rummaging through my uh, analytics to give me some advice as to how we can improve some of my suggested video rankings and a few other things. So uh, it's gonna, going to really help grow the channel, I think, by making this transition. But it's kind of scary when you've got this thing you've built and you kind of move it from one thing to the other. But it's a pretty smooth process. It was actually smoother than uh, YouTube indicated it would be because I was supposedly going to lose a whole bunch of comments and everything. But it looks like uh, everything just just kind of went right over, so uh, no problems at all with that transition, but you will see some changes to the channel name uh, moving forward. But I think it's easier to remember Lon.TV than it is to remember my name. So hopefully that will also help grow the channel just by that simple name change. But a lot of you noticed that right away. Uh, I can't get anything by you all, which is great. And via Twitter, JR wrote in asking if Gmail was better than Yahoo Mail uh, insofar as hacking is concerned. And the obvious answer to that is yes, Gmail is much better, primarily because we know the Yahoo database has been uh, exploited by a hacking group and every single username and password from like 2012 is just out there right now for the taking. And I would strongly suggest if you have used your Yahoo uh, email address and uh, password on any other service, just pause the video right now, go to all of those services and change your password because what's going to happen over the next couple of years is that uh, this database is going to continue to proliferate around the internet and people are going to be running scripts and seeing how many accounts they can get into because people often use the same username and password on other services. I know a lot of people that have been tripped up in this. I even had something happen to me a couple of years ago because I had a junk account that I was using the same password for and, and it got into one of these databases. I think that was from the Adobe hack. So uh, you definitely need to go in and make sure that every service you're using has a unique password. That is a really good way to keep yourself secure. Uh, there's some great password managers out there to help with those sorts of things. So LastPass and 1Password are great examples of uh, password managers. So find some system that works 
works for you, but try to keep a different password for every single service you use. The other thing I suggest doing is enabling two-factor authentication uh, because this is really what happens more often than not. Uh, in this case, of course, we've got the DNC hack going on right now. We've got the Podesta emails floating around. We've had other hacks in the past, like from Sony. And almost every single time, it involves uh, just a piece of phishing email uh, being delivered to somebody that looks legitimate. They click on the link, and it looks like a login. They log into their account and basically hand their passwords over to the hackers, and that's how they get in uh, to the first stage of their hack. And in the case of these political scandals right now, uh, all they needed to do was get into the email account, and they can uh, basically do whatever they want. But at the end of the day, there wasn't some exploit that was executed here. It was basic social engineering, and you can really protect yourself by setting up two-factor authentication. I did a video on this as, so, as to how to get it set up on Google, which you can see uh, down below in the master playlist. But basically what happens is, is that after you log in with your password, uh, the Google website will then challenge you for a number that is generated on an app that you run on your phone. So uh, you give them that number. There's a synchronization that goes on between your phone's clock and the clock at the Google server. The number can only exist for a certain length of time, and that is how you get in. And it's much more secure than just a password by itself, because if somebody gets your password, they still can't get access to the account uh, unless they have that app running that number generator. And uh, this same technology works on a number of different services like Evernote, Dropbox, Microsoft, every, just about anything you can think of as using some form of two-factor authentication. And I also strongly urge you not to use one that relies on text messages, because as you saw uh, with the number of YouTubers, what was happening was uh, people were going out to the phone companies, socially engineering the customer service reps to uh, switch the SIM card from the one that was in the YouTuber's phone to the hacker's SIM card, and then they were able to get all the text messages from that YouTuber after they gained their password. So uh, there's a lot of things that go on here that don't require a lot of uh, computer science knowledge to do. It's more about how well you can socially uh, work the, the, the process of calling customer service and convincing them you are who you say you are or not, uh, more than uh, a lot of technical skills. So I would strongly urge you to kind of just think about those things and uh, get yourself a good personal security policy because we're in an era now where it's very easy to get access to your account. Even if you're not a celebrity, uh, there's still a lot of value to what you have inside your email right now. A great book I would suggest you take a look at is called Ghost in the Wire. And it's uh, written by uh, Kevin Mitnick, who was one of the first uh, early celebrity type hackers, I guess. He's now in the white hat hacking business, helping companies secure them themselves. But a lot of what he did in his early days was uh, just convincing people over the phone that he was authorized to have certain information, which got him logged into systems, and he kind of worked his way uh, into them that way. He was very, uh, very good programmer and technical uh, person, but he really had a very good knack for getting people to trust him. And off, more often than not, that is how these hacks occur, is just through uh, a fault of people trusting someone they really should not have been trusting. And Calliope writes in asking what Android box is best for gaming and is affordable under $50. And this is going to be my topic this week uh, for my Q&A for you because uh, in the early days of the channel, I got a lot of these cheap Android boxes sent to me and uh, just about every one I tested was just garbage. They uh, took the tablet interface and just put it onto a TV box. Sometimes they put their own little launcher on it, uh, but every one of them has really been a horrible experience for uh, general consumers, which is why I really only look at the uh, devices running the official Android TV interface because those do really work a lot better. And lately I've been seeing some of these cheap boxes coming out now that don't even work with Netflix because uh, those apps are being designed now for uh, later versions of Android and uh, the old versions which typically run on these boxes, many are still running KitKat or earlier, uh, do not support uh, some of these newer apps. So I'd love to hear from you which Android boxes you know of out there that are decent, uh, things that I might be able to test and recommend that aren't that expensive. Because I would like to find maybe the hidden gem Android box that's out there that might be really nice and consumer friendly. But uh, so far, after looking at a lot of these things, I really try to shy away from them because uh, the Android TV interface, the official one at least, uh, is really a much better consumer experience than I'm seeing on a lot of these cheap boxes. And I've got a giveaway to announce at lon.tv slash enter. We're going to give away the Blue Life One X2 that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this does work on US carriers, but not Sprint or Verizon. So if you're AT&T or T-Mobile, uh, this will work on 
on your uh, particular platform there. Unfortunately, this is going to be a US only one because I have to ship this out myself, but I will be asking a number of the uh, folks who have contacted the channel with products to review over the last couple of years to see if they can uh, ship things overseas. We did do that with the NVIDIA Shield. So I am not forgetting about uh, all the international viewers out there. We will do some more giveaways in the future, but for things that I get in here that I'm getting rid of, I got to do US only at the moment just due to the cost of freight. So uh, that is what we're giving away this week, lom.tv slash enter, and you can have a shot to win. We're going to close the registration on Sunday, next Sunday at midnight. So definitely get your entries in soon and only enter once, please. So this week, we've got a couple of different things to look at. I already shot this review of the HyperX uh, Stinger headset, and this is a $50 gaming headset. Not too bad, actually, for the price. No bells and whistles on it, but if you're looking for something cheap and effective with a good warranty, uh, this might be worth looking at. You'll be able to hear it and see it in a few days, so be on the lookout for that. I also got in the Moto Play G4, and this is uh, probably the least expensive Verizon phone on the market. If you buy it at Amazon subsidized with their advertising, uh, it's $99. Otherwise, it's $150. So not a bad spare phone to have, or if you've got a family member that doesn't do all that much on their phone, uh, this is a very affordable smartphone that uh, I think is going to be uh, a decent phone. Nothing crazy, but it should work okay. I also hope to take a look at that lacy, ruggedized hard drive that I keep talking about. I did finally plug it in and test it, so hopefully we'll get to that in the middle of the week this week. So be on the lookout for that as well. A nice little product there. You got to pay a little extra for that ruggedness, but we'll get into all of those things in the review. Now, if you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel. We also have YouTube fan funding at lon.tv. If you want to make a one-time contribution, uh, just do let me know that you left that contribution because otherwise I don't know you did it. They do uh, send the money in, but it doesn't say who sent it. So uh, email me at lon at lon.tv if you did make a contribution there because I do want to recognize you on the wrap-up and at the end credits. And we've got our affiliate link at Plex. If you open up a free account on the Plex site, uh, no purchase required. Uh, we get a little bit of uh, money from that subscription, so definitely check out that Plex channel there. We also have my email list at lon.tv slash email. I'm down to about maybe once or twice a month on this one. I really need to do more on the email list. It's just one of those things that slips my mind. I got to like put it into my uh, to-do list every week, but definitely subscribe on there because I will be doing a few giveaways that'll be specific to the email list because I'm also trying to uh, build up a good list for when I do some things on other platforms. You got the Facebook page at lon.tv slash Facebook, Reddit page at lon.tv slash Reddit, and we've got the lon.tv store where I sell a lot of the items that I bought and I'm now reselling. We're going to have uh, two laptops up there by the time you see that. Uh, the HP we just reviewed as well as an Asus laptop, uh, which has been upgraded to eight gigs of RAM as well. Uh, both of those will be up at a pretty good price on the store, so definitely get in on that. And that's gonna do it for this week's weekly wrap up. As always, please keep those questions and comments and suggestions coming, and I will see you all next week. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.